Hey guys, how you guys doing today? All right, today I'm making candles. And the reason I'm making candles is because Aiden and I, Aiden is my 12 year old son, um, we have been accepted to be vendors at the Homesteaders of America conference this year. And I cannot tell you how excited we are for this because, I mean, I've never even been to it, let alone now I get to be a vendor for it. So we're pretty pumped about it. I am making candles for mine. And he actually is, uh, Aiden is an author. So he's 12 and he's got, I think, six published books now. And one of them is on the history of homesteading. So it's the history and then the end of the book kind of brings it into our homesteading and what he does on the homestead. So he will have his books and I will have my candles. I mean, we're only in February right now, so, you know, I've got time, but I'd like to get a good amount of supply done. So I'm starting with what I have and, um, you know, I will work from there. So today is candle making day. Um, Matt took the kids to uh, this survival camp thing. So they're gone for the whole day. So it is 9.30 in the morning. They're gone till 3 in the afternoon. And uh, yeah, so I've got the whole day to myself to, uh, to get these candles done. So I'm going to show you guys just a little bit of the process of how I do this, um, how I make these candles. These are, these are 100% uh, soy and just natural, completely natural candles. They're, they're, the, they're natural soy from, um, they're locally sourced. Um, and the essential oils are 100% pure essential oils. And um, they're like therapeutic grade. They're like really, really good expensive <laughs> oils. So I'm just going to show you a little bit. I'm going to make a candle or two and show you how I do it. So for these jars, it only takes a little more than half a cup to fill them. So that's how much I put in here at a time. Just kind of let it in here. And then you pick out what oils you want. So this is the Homesteaders of America conference is in October. So I'm sticking to more of fall and like Christmassy scents uh, for that time. So let's do a cinnamon. So with with soy candles, um, <clears throat> you have to be very sort of specific with your oils because soy has a harder time holding on to scent. So you gotta use more scent, but it has to be still measured out because if you do too much, it'll pool on top. And I made that mistake, so. All right, just pour it in here. Then I take this over here and then put it over here. And you get popsicle sticks and kind of just wedge it in between here to hold this up. To hold up the wick. <clears throat> and I'm writing down But they are in order on this paper so that I know what's what and then I can put the labels on them. So I'm going to finish. Three days, and today is the day to smoke it. 
because it's already sold. <laughs> so I gotta rinse it off first. Still on the hotter side. What? It's still on the hotter side of good. The hotter oh, side of good. Like it's my temperature control. Huh? It says you're my temperature control. Yeah. Well, it's, it's perfect right now. That's good, right? Yeah. Alright, so we'll come out in the snow, <laughs> and, oh, oh my gosh, I think I need to clear a spot here, um, and start smoking, and we do it right in the snow and everything, it doesn't matter, people want the bacon, so we have to, we gotta do it, and I'm fine with that, it's not a big deal, it's right outside the door, the problem is, finding spots to put things, so, like, I gotta clear this off, this grill, which actually is supposed to be covered up. I don't know why it's not. That's probably not a good thing. It's going to end up rusting. Alright, we'll set that here and we'll get to smoking. I just put them both on here. They usually fit. It's pretty big. It's fine. Put the lid on and let it go. It's it's at the higher end of hot right now, so of well the higher end of ordeal I should say. So it might go a little quicker. It should calm down a little. But really the snow doesn't do anything to this thing. It doesn't like keep it cold or or anything. It it works really well no matter what time of the year it is. Alright guys. Bacon just came off the smoker. What did I do? Oh, Got the tongs here. Uh, it looks really, really good. I apologize if it's really dark in here. I actually should probably just turn my light on here over here. There we go. Maybe you can see better now. Bring it over here. All right, guys. Bacon, bacon, bacon. So I smoked uh, two. Well, it's technically one, but I cut it in half. Uh, to make it easier for the curing and the smoking, but let me show you right here. Looks so good. Look at that. Oh, delicious! Trust me, it is delicious. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is throw it in the fridge, and it's really just to cool it down for easier cutting. I really need to get a slicer. That's what I would love to get. Um, I wonder if there's an attachment for that for my KitchenAid, which I call Dixie. That's that's my KitchenAid's name. <laughs> I named her because I love her and I use her all the time. Anyway, uh, it's really cooling it down is just kind of making it easier for it to slice later on. Otherwise, you know, it kind of gets off the edges and, and it's a little bit more difficult to, um, to slice when it's still warm. All right, that's in the fridge. Now all I'm doing really is um, labeling and uh, cleaning up the jars and labeling the candles that are finished. I ended up getting 43, I think, total today. I'm planning for a couple hundred, but not today. I have to order more supplies. I ran out of oils and everything. But one thing I am going to continue doing is making tapered candles from beeswax. So this is melting down now. And once that's completely melted, I will go ahead and start dipping. See, it's getting there. Once it's done, I'll start dipping them and uh, making tapers. All right, here are the finished jars. Um, well, the finished candles right now. I have to cut the wicks still and uh, label the rest, but they're not all fully cured yet. So I'll show you one that is pretty done. Please. You can see that very well. So that's one. That's our new logo, kind of rebranding Country View Homestead. Um, yeah, so that's it. These are the smaller ones right now. There's also this size. And then the typical, I have the bigger ones and the Country Jar bigger ones as well. All right, guys, uh, I'm just going to show you a quick demonstration on um, dipping candles tapered candles, making tapered candles. 
and excuse my mess of the house. Everything is completely upside down today. I was canning all day yesterday, and now I'm making candles all day today, so everything's kind of a mess. Um, so anyway, I'm going to demonstrate real quick uh, how to dip candles in, uh, by hand and um, out of beeswax. This is just the cotton wick, just a typical wick. Um, and so I do it long enough so that I can do two at a time. I do have a thing that you can like wind it around and then dunk it, but I don't have a pot big enough and I don't have enough wax to fill it enough to do that. So I'm just doing them by hand and I'm just, just hold it kind of like that and dip them like this. Just kind of put it in there. It's going to sort of bend all over at first. Just kind of get the excess off. And this is just cold water that I'm, I should probably point it on there, that I'm putting it on there. And then you can just straighten those out, but they're just going to bend for the first couple times. And the cold water just cools it off quick enough so you can dunk it faster. You can do go back and forth a lot faster. All right, straighten them out. So what is this, dunk, I think number four. And I do 25 dunks and that'll give you a good sized candle. And there you have it guys, there you have it. Hand dipped, tapered beeswax candles. Mm -hmm.